Welcome back to Coding with Steph, where I upload weekly Laravel tutorials. Today I'm going to be setting up authentication using Laravel Breeze, which I touched on in my last video, but today I'm going to go into a little bit more detail and show you how to customize it to suit your application. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe and click the bell down below to get notified when new videos go live. And you can also find me on Twitter, at Coding with Steph, if you want to chat about anything to do with Laravel. But without further ado, let's get started. Breeze is a minimal authentication starter kit that is the simplest way to get started with authenticating users in your application. It will install all the routes and templates that you need to get started, so then you can concentrate on your application itself. If you've ever used Laravel UI in the past, think of Breeze as an updated version of that for Laravel 8. So let's get started by getting everything installed. We'll create a new Laravel project called Breeze. And I have a database set up for this already, so I can update the EMV file there, and then we can migrate. Now we can require Breeze, head over to the documentation, and grab this. Then we need to freeze install and then npm install and npm run dev. Okay, so what did that all just do? Well, if we go to php artisan route list, we can see, just make this a little bit bigger, we can see all of these routes have been set up for us for logins, register, forgotten password, etc. And all of that's been set up for us by Breeze. And Breeze has created a routes file just here that sets up all of these routes for us so we can change these if we ever need to. And it's also set up basic blade templates for us and styled them up with Tailwind. So if we go to our app, there's now a login and a register link in the top right hand corner. And we can go to the register page and we can register for the site. And there we see we're logged in. We're seeing the dashboard and just here we have a logout option and then just to prove that it's working, I can log in with the account that we've just created. So as you can see, everything for a basic login system has been set up for us in a matter of minutes. But what if we wanted to customize this a little bit for our application? For example, say we wanted users to log in using a username instead of their email address. Well, to do that, we're gonna to need to update a few things. We'll need a username field in the database, a username field during registration, and the login form will need to change so that it checks against the username column and not the email column. So let's look first at the database. We'll create a migration. Called add username to users table. And then we can open that up. And in here, we can add our username column of type string. And in the down method, we can drop that column. OK, so let's then migrate. Fantastic. And if we have a quick look in our database, we can see the username column has been added here. Next, let's have a look at the registration form. You'll see that Breeze has created all of the views that we need in the auth directory of our views directory. So we're free to customize things as we need to. So let's open up the register form here and we will add a new field at the top of the form called username. There 
we go. And now if we open up our registration form again, we'll see we have a new username field. And notice here that Breeze is using view components, which are stored in this directory. So we've used the input component here, which pulls in this HTML. And this is useful for managing things like our classes, which are common across all input boxes. We only have to change something once if we ever need to, and all inputs will change accordingly. So now if we were to submit this form, obviously nothing would happen yet. What we need to do next is have a look in our controllers. And again, Breeze has created all of the controllers that we need, so we're free to customize things as we need to. And just here in the registered user controller, there is a store method, and we need to update this, add username to the validation, and add the username and the create method here. And one final thing we need to do is in our user model, we'll need to add the username to the fillable property. And the reason we do this is because this create method here is using mass assignment, so we need to tell it that it's allowed to do that. Right, let's give our form another test and register a new account. We'll call this one coding with Steph. And register. And that has let us in. Everything looks fine. Let's just check our database now to ensure that, yep, our username is saved into the database table. Brilliant. So next, let's tackle the login form. We want this field here, the email, to change to username. So again, we can go into our login view. And we can just update here to say username, type it want to be text. So now if we refresh, we're seeing username field. But we need to tell it to check that. So let's open up the authenticated session controller, which handles the logins. And as you can see, things are slightly different here. An authenticate method is being called here on this request. So we actually need to look in the login request class, which can be found here in the requests directory. And as you can see, this is taking care of our validation rules. So we will need to update that to username. And we don't want to validate for an email. And just here, we need to tell it to use username field and to return the validation message. Let's give it a go. If I try to log in with coding with Steph and my password, there we go, I'm in. And just to prove a point, if I try and log in with my email address, we see an error the credentials do not match our records. So that's working as we wanted it to. Brilliant. Now in a real application, this would just be the starting point. So next we'd want to add another section, for example, to this nav here that is only accessible by logged in users. So let's create a new section here to see how that works. Close all of these down. Let's open up our routes file. As you can see, we'll have this dashboard route here. Let's create a new one and we'll call it downloads. And the important part about this route is this middleware section. This middleware section here is telling Laravel is to put any requests for downloads through the auth middleware first. So that middleware is making sure that a user is logged in before displaying the downloads page. And if not, it will redirect them to the login screen. So now to continue with our example, let's create this view here for the download screen.
And for this, we will just duplicate the dashboard just as a starting point. And we can say this is the downloads page. Download some files here. And then to add to the nav, we'll open up this navigation blade file here. And we can simply duplicate this and call it downloads. Refresh this screen. You see the downloads link here. Download some files here. And if I log out and try to access downloads, it's sending us to the login screen. So as you can see, we've been able to get authentication set up in our app in a matter of minutes. And we have access to all of the templates, controllers, and routes in order to customize things in any way we need to and build out our application. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, feel free to give us a like down below and drop me a comment. And for now, I'll see you next time.